Master, dear Master, Master, speak. Speak, Mr. Frodo. Mr. Frodo, speak. Don't leave me here alone. Don't die. It's your Sam calling. Don't go where I can't fall. Wake up. Wake up, Mr. Frodo. Wake up. Frodo, my dear. My dear, wake up. No. Oh, oh, oh. What am I to do? What, what am I to do, though? See it through, I suppose. What, me? Alone? Go to the crack of doom and all? What? Me? Take the ring from him? Oh. There's no time to lose. The war's begun. No chance to go back with it and get advice or permission. No. It sits here till they come and kill me over my master's body and gets it. Or take it and go. All right. Then take it it is. Out you come. Goodbye, master, my dear. Forgive your Sam. He'll come back to the spot when the job's done. If he manages it. And then he'll not leave you again. And if the lady could hear me and give me one wish, I would wish to come back and find you again. Goodbye, Mr. Fulton. Bye. Oh, what's that? Orcs. At last, the hunt is out. I'm caught. No, I'm not. The ring. Here goes. The head of the orc company appeared in the cleft before him, right before him, just as he put the ring on. The world changed, and a single moment of time was filled with an hour of thought. He didn't feel invisible at all but horribly and uniquely visible. And he knew that somewhere an eye was searching for him. He listened. Hola, Gorbag! What are you doing up there? Had enough of war already? Orders, you lubber, thinking of coming down to fight. Orders to you? I'm in command of this pass, so speak civil. Hey, 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 here's something lying right on the road. A spy. What? They're lifting him up. They're taking him. Curse the filth. Down that hole they went. Come on, we've got enough. Let's go and have a look at the prince. If there's any game, me and my lads must be in it. Now, 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 I have my orders. Prisoners to be stripped of full description of every article found on him. Uh, uh, stripped, uh, <laughs> What teeth, nails, hair... None of that, no! He's wanted safe and whole. Uh, you'll find that difficult. He's nothing but carrion now. You fool! Carrion! Is that all you know about Shelob? Uh, she doesn't eat dead meat. Uh, this fellow's not dead. Ah, gone. She's got her poison. More than one, I can tell you that, Rosie the Harbor. I've got it all wrong. And I knew it in my heart. May I be forgiven. Now I've got to get back to him somehow. Somehow. That's what I'm going to do with him. Put him right up in the top chamber, out of harm's way. He'll be safe there. I don't trust all my lads, and none of yours, I, you. Nor you neither, when you're mad for fun. Don't tell me that I'll do my own The voices began to move away. Sam noticed that the stone door to the orc quarters was shaped with a dark space between the top and the low arch, which was the opening. With his remaining strength, he jumped, caught the top, and scrambled over. Then he ran madly round a bend and up a winding tunnel. 
The gate was shut. Sam hurled himself against the bolted, brazen plates and fell senseless to the ground. He was out in the darkness. Frodo was alive, but taken by the enemy. You've been listening to The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, adapted for radio by Bernard Mays, and featuring James Arrington as Frodo, John Vickery as Faramir, Lou Bliss as Sam, and Gail Chug as Gollum and the narrator.